Hello and welcome back to your fourth lesson on our Django app building the new master code online. Um, before we get going further, I should say, um, we need to look at the settings.py file. Now this file is like the nervous system of our Django project or even the brain, I guess you can consider it. It, it uh, controls mainly everything in our project. So I want to review it, uh, make sure you understand every part of it um, before we even get uh, move on any further because in the next tutorial we're going to go ahead and set up for Heroku and we'll be making some changing changes to the settings.py file so it'll be easier for me to explain it to you now before I have to go through and uh, change some things around so this runs on Heroku so let's go ahead and take a look at settings.py file go ahead and open it up in your text editor and there we go all right, I'm going to minimize this over here. All right, so <clears throat> first off, you got a comment up here, and it's just telling you where you can find some information on your settings. It also tells you the version of the Django and everything else, and it says this file was created when we ran Django admin start project, which we ran in the previous tutorial to create our project. Uh, next thing we got is an import OS, and what import OS is is a package that uh, basically handles the paths of um, f uh, directories on our um, uh, on our machine and lets Python interact with that. So if you look at the next one, we got base dir, and it has OS path dir name, OS path dir name, OS path absolute path, and then file. So basically, it's saying where is our base directory? Well, our base directory is going to be the second master. So if you opened up at the same level I did, you got master and then you got bin and include and then you got master and then master again. Alright, so uh, eventually we're going to change this master. I don't know if we're doing this tutorial. I don't remember where I said I was going to do that. But anyhow, because um, this gets confusing. Let's just do it now. Right click on it and go ahead and change this to SRC for source. Uh, ref Factor rename. I'm just going to call this SRC. And I'm going to take off search preferences, search and comments, and just refact. Boom, there we go. Alright, now if you ever want to know where what the actual path is to your base directory, you can just do print base dir. Alright. And if you go into your terminal, hold on a second. I need to get off this line so it updates. There we go. It should print my path. Thought it was going to print it. All right, we'll just kill the server and then rerun the server, and it will print the path for us. Right here, users, Tom, desktop, Django, master, source. All right, so this is our path right here. So if we open it back up, so what it said was master source all right so this is our base directory all right so um that's what that does right there anyhow uh next thing you see is secret key now this is uh cryptographic signing uh basically what this is is a security measure um for when we're like changing our passwords or doing other things like that um if we don't have this security key in here uh if i was to command x to cut it and cut it out and go back to my terminal see we get an error here it says secret key setting is cannot be empty must not be empty so we need that all right and if you're interested in cryptographic signing and everything that comes along with it, uh, Django has a pretty good uh, page on explaining what cryptographic signing is. Uh, the next one we have is debug and debug set to true. Now, the first thing you see is security warning. Do not run debug uh, with run debug set set to true in production and that's because if someone lands on an error page they can get a lot of information about your project and probably do a lot of mean things to you uh, so you always want to set this to false um, and I'm going to show you in the next tutorial how we can set this to false in production and uh, true in 
uh, or development, and you don't have to ever change it again. All right. So uh, you also see de debug uh, quite often throughout our project. Uh, gives us a lot of great insights on issues. Um, and I kind of use it as a test as well to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So I'll show you that as well. Uh, allowed host. Now, say we're, we're building master code online. Uh, if we uploaded this to, uh, uh, to production and this was set to false, all right, we would be required to have an allowed host in there. An allowed host would look something like this, master code dot online all right um whoa sorry about that hit my mouse all right master code online we can also use something like uh, a wild card in front of it so it could be either www or it could just be uh master code without the w all right so that's what allowed host is and it's just another security measure to make sure no one's uh stealing your site all right we'll put this back to true so i don't forget where we're at uh, next thing you see is a love installed apps. Now these apps right here that are installed um, are installed default by Django. All right, and we may or may not use some of these. Okay, uh, you see authentication. We'll use that so users can log into our site and leave comments or you know interact with our site in some sort of way. You also got like something like messages where. Uh, we can pop up messages on our site. It's pretty cool. Um, sessions that has to do with cookies. Admin. There's a Django has a pretty cool uh, admin site, which we'll use in the beginning when we're testing our app. But we'll end up building our own uh, for production because at, uh, Django's admins really only set up for like the developer to um, interact with the site on the back end. It's not really developed to uh, be used by multiple employees or even users themselves uh, next thing you got is middleware and what middleware is is little software packages that allow you to uh, change the way the um, Django application interacts with the server um, between re request and um, uh, response request and response have to do with the website uh, or with the internet basically uh, when you get a request, it's when a user visits a URL and they're sending a request to the server saying, hey, I want to see this web page, and the response being the server sending back a web page. All right? So middleware allows us to uh, kind of interact with that, that uh, procedure. Sorry if I stopped uh, midway through that explanation, but I heard my wife screaming, so I had to go see what was going on. So the next thing we see is root URL conf, and that is the uh, root to the main URLs file, and the URLs files handle uh, how to send back a uh, or handle a response, a request, and how to send back a response. Sorry, gotta get back in the swing of things here. Um, so uh, you see, it says master .urls, So inside master. And then URL. So that is our URL's file. Now we will see this uh, in action quite often. So I'm going to leave that to when we get to it. All right. Uh, next thing is our templates. Uh, Django um, has some really cool features when it comes to templates. You can think of your templates as your HTML files. Um, we'll dig into these when we start writing the code. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of options that go along with it, so that's what this deals with. We'll end up changing this as we go on um, throughout the tutorials. Uh, the next thing is WSGI, and this is a web, a web server gateway interface application, and this is how a Python uh, application runs on a server. Um, you see it says master WSGI application. If you look over here, the web, uh, web server gateway interface right here. Um, and what we got is application get WSGI application. That's what it's saying in the settings.py file. So we do need that to run our Django project. And that's how, like I said, our Python application, which is actually Django, is going to run on a server. All right. Uh, next things are database for right now. 
uh, we're going to actually change this in the next tutorial, but right now all we have is uh, SQLite 3 set up on for our project. Now SQLite 3 is great for development, but not so much for production. Um, so in the next tutorial, uh, we'll go ahead and set up Postgres for uh, production, and we'll keep SQLite 3 for development. All right. Um, next one is uh, authentic pass uh, auth authentication password validate validators. Um, right now, these are all set to they're not active because we need to add some code to them. We will do that throughout the um, of the build process when we actually start working with users. Um, so we're not going to worry about that too much right now. Language code. Uh, Obviously, I speak English, so I'm going to keep mine to English. Uh, if you speak another language, you feel free to change it. Uh, over on Django's uh, uh, website, they have all the different language codes here, or you can just Google them. Uh, the next one is time zone. You can set the time zone of your application if the app is used um, in one location primarily. I'm on the East Coast of the United States, so I could set this to... Um, Eastern Standard Time if you guys were all from there uh, but uh, there's no need to really do that so we're just gonna leave it at UTC alright uh, the next one is uh, the the I-18N and that has to do with uh, um, turning translations on or off so it's set to true we have translations on um, if everybody spoke the same language and you didn't need this, you can set it to false and your application would actually perform a little bit better. Um, but, you know, we're, it's not a perfect world and we speak multiple languages, so probably better off leaving it true, but that's up to you. Um, the L110N, uh, that has to do with the, uh, localizing data. This kind of goes with the same thing as translations. So that's up to you if you, want to set it or not and the last one is use time zone um, if you want to use time zone uh, it'll be set to keep your servers on local time that's you know another thing's completely up to you this is normally how I keep it set unless a client asks for it otherwise but you know uh, just want to review them and then the last and final thing is our static URL the year it's gonna be our URL to our static files for example CSS JavaScript and fonts or whatever else you want to throw in there so this would be say our website was master code online so we be it would look something like oops look something like this and then static all right so and then back here would be some CSS file, then bootstrap.min.css. So that would be our URL to our static, all right? But uh, right now it stays like this. So what I was just trying to show you, which I didn't explain very well, is what it would look like in the URL. Uh, but we leave it like this because Django will take that and add it onto the back end of our URL, all right? Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. In the next tutorial, we're going to come back to the settings.py file, and we're now going to change everything I taught you. Uh, not everything, just kidding. Uh, we're going to change some things so this runs on Heroku. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.